All right, so 11.4, we're going to look at surface area of pyramids and of cones. So we looked at the two kind of shapes yesterday that didn't have points. There's your cone, and there's your pyramid. So both of these are lethal weapons, are they not? You can kill somebody with them. Oh, please don't, though. Death by geometry. Not good. Okay, so... These have in common the fact that they both have one base, right? And um, all of the lateral faces go to a point. So for your pyramid, don't attempt to draw this. I just want you to see how the formula is derived. All right, so for our pyramid, we happen to have on this one a regular hexagon. And um, I know that it's regular because all sides are the same. And that means that all of these bases of these triangles are also S. In other words, the same um, length as the sides of that hexagonal base. What kind of a pyramid is this called? What kind of pyramid? Name its base. So it's a hexagonal pyramid. Um, and then because there's six sides on a hexagon, there are six lateral triangles. And those triangles represent the lateral area. Isn't the, base of, or isn't the area of a triangle one half base times height? So they're telling you the height is this cursive L. That's the height of the... That's the height of just the face right here. It's not the height of the pyramid itself. That cursive L is called slant height. Isn't the, isn't the side of this pyramid slanted? Are all sides of all pyramids slanted? So that's why it's called the slant height. It's always the height of one of the lateral faces. Um, the height of the pyramid itself goes straight through from the top vertex of that pyramid, and it's perpendicular to the base. So my red pen here is the height of the pyramid itself. What you're going to find in some of these problems is that they're going to use special right triangles, Pythagoras theorem, in order for you to find the height and or the slant height. Because if I give you the height of the prism and I give you the slant height, doesn't that form two sides of a right triangle? The hypotenuse and one of the legs? Can't you find the other leg of that right triangle and double it to get the side length of this? So you might have to run into that today. So some of these questions are going to be difficult. But here's the surface area. So they've got six S's, S plus S plus S, six times. Isn't that representing the perimeter of that base? So they're going to replace those six S's with big P, perimeter of the base. Each of the triangles has a one half in common and the slant height in common. So the lateral area, the area of all these triangles, is one half the perimeter of the base times L the slant height. And then plus, this time only one big B. Why one big B? There's only one base. There's not two bases this time. So that's your, go ahead and write this down or highlight it on the paper that I gave you. And then for cones, which is the other figure that we're looking at, What's nice about this picture is they have taken the cone and they've cut right along here on the cone and they've opened up. You've ever, I don't know if you've ever had, well surely you've had a snow cone before, right? We had a snow cone in a paper cup that looks like this. They used, well, they used to make snow cones in little paper cups that look like this. They also, you know the water coolers where you get water from that bubble up. The cups in the water coolers used to look like this too. Um, but my point being is if you took that cup and cut it straight down here like they've done here and open it up, it really doesn't make a complete circle. It makes part of a circle, doesn't it? <clears throat> so they have used area of a sector, so they've gone through here and explained how they've used area of a sector uh, in order to find this because they've taken the area of this sector out of the total area of that circle. Um, 
And so that's how they came up with a lateral area. This is your lateral area on the cone. It looks like a Pac-Man figure, doesn't it? And so that comes out to be pi r l. What's l again? Slant height. So the slant height on a cone, again, looks like the slant height on the pyramid. Now I have to warn you that there's a difference on the pyramid between this is the edge right here of the pyramid. This is the slant height. Oftentimes they're going to give you the edge where my black pen is, and you have to come up with a slant height. How are you going to do that? What does my red pen, my black pen, and this part of the pyramid make? A right triangle. Can't you use Pythagoras theorem to find? Um, either they're going to give you this side, which is bisected by my slant height, and you could find the slant height using Pythagoras theorem. You have to know where the right angles are. So this is going to be a bit more challenging than yesterday. All right, so your total surface area, this is your lateral. Then we're going to add pi r squared, because this is not the area of the circular base. Now you'll notice that the lateral areas of the pyramid and the cones have something in common. What are they? The slant height. Yesterday, what did the lateral area of the prism and the cylinder have in common? Height. So whichever part of the formula has height in it, either slant height or regular height, that's your lateral area of the formula. You, you need to know that because it's not going to be broken out for you. All right, so let's look at your study guide. And so I want you to highlight, if you haven't already, a couple of things. <coughs> so here's your total surface area for your cone. And wouldn't they write on the pyramid in here? Am I missing it? That's your lateral area. I don't know. They didn't write it on there, did they? <coughs> Shocking. So, for your total surface area for a pyramid, what is it? One half P curse of L plus what? Big B. They've written it out in words. And this is just the uh, lateral area. They didn't actually write out the total surface area. And then along here, just to clarify some parts of pyramids, um, they've given you an example of parts of the pyramid. So from the top of the vertex perpendicular to the base is always the height of that pyramid. Same thing goes for the cone. Here's that height of the cone. It's also perpendicular to the base. Um, all of these triangular faces are your lateral faces. You have, you have a lateral edge that I said was not the uh, slant height. Don't get sucked into that. This is your slant height. That was fun. <laughs> so that's your slant height. And that's the biggest error that you're going to make is your slant height. And I'm just caution you on that down. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples. I've got all my answers on here. Let's get one that doesn't have answers. I bet you wish I gave you the printout with answers. All right. So, let's look at example one. So, you have to identify that it's a what? Pyramid. So, immediately you're going to say, okay, they want lateral area and the surface area, and then rounder answers in the nearest tenth. So, total surface area is one half EL plus big B. Make sure you're using the right formula for the right situation. And so that means I have to find perimeter of the base, slant height, and area of the base. So over here, I'm going to find what I need. So step one, I'm going to find perimeter of the base. What kind of base is this? A square. So what's the name of the pyramid? Square pyramid. Okay. Yeah, square pyramid. I don't know why that boggled me. How many sides are there on this? Four times the 12 centimeters. So total perimeter is equal to 48 centimeters. So there's one piece. And then step two, I want to know the slant height. 
Is this right here the slant height? Yes. If they had given me this edge right here instead, then this right here would be bisected by this slant height. So that would be six. And let's just say for chuckle's sake that the eight was over here on the edge. This is where your right angle is. So that eight would end up being the hypotenuse of your right triangle. So you would have had uh, six squared plus x squared equals eight squared if that eight had been on the lateral edge instead. And so you would use that to find your lateral area. But here they've given us, given it to us straight out. So lateral area is eight centimeters. We don't have to do anything to find it. And then step three, I need to find big B. Since it's a square, isn't the area of a square a side squared? So for our purposes, we're going to take 12 centimeters and square it. What do you get? What's 12 squared? 144 centimeters squared. And so now I have everything to plug into that formula. One half, my perimeter is 48 centimeters. My slant height is 8 centimeters. <coughs> and my big B is 144 centimeters squared. So I'm going to break out the handy dandy calculator. <coughs> and I'm going to calculate 1 half, so 0 0.5 times 48 times 8. So the 192 represents what? The lateral area. 192 centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared plus 144 centimeters squared. So now I'm going to add the 144 to the 192 and I get 336. So total surface area is 336 centimeters squared. Lateral surface area is the 192 centimeters squared. No need to go out to the nearest tent so they turned out for me. Yes. I can't hear you because of this air conditioning. The 144 I took over here, big B was a square. So side squared is the area for a square. And so I just took the side length 12 centimeters and squared it. Make sense? Okay. Um, then we're going to look at the cones. I'm going to choose to do question number four. Because they've turned the cone sideways, and they've have they given you radius or have they given you diameter? They're trying to make you think, by the way, that this is slant height. They're trying to confuse you because it looks like it should be the height of the cone, but really, isn't this the height of the cone? Is that slant height, though? No. This is your slant height. And have they labeled this slanted edge as 26 millimeters? Yeah. If they had given you the height of the cone, then you'd have to cut this diameter in half and make it 10. And use Pythagoras' theorem, so 10 squared plus you know, whatever they give you here squared equals that slant height squared. They're going to do that to you today, so you need to be prepared to do it. All right, so since it's a cone, we're going to identify the circular formula as pi RL plus pi R squared. So all I need is the radius and the slant height. And again, cones are really nice, kind of just like cylinders are really nice, because they're easy to find most of those things. Your radius is what? 10 millimeters, so that's half of that 20. And your slant height, they've literally given to you here, is 26 millimeters. So we're ready to plug and chug. I'm going to leave pi as pi until the very end. So my radius goes in here is 10 millimeters. My slant height, 26 millimeters. And my radius is 10 millimeters. So 10 times 26 gives me 260 pi millimeters squared, plus 10 squared is 100 pi millimeters squared. If I add those together, my total surface area is 360 pi millimeters squared. I prefer the exact answer. 
but most likely they're going to, as they did here, ask you to give the decimal equivalency. So you need to take that 360 and multiply it by 3.14. And in this case, we get an approximation of 1,130.4 millimeters squared. What's your lateral area? The 265 <coughs> millimeters squared, which its approximation is 816.4 millimeters squared. So I like the exact answer. If you want to check your work, you're going to have to take your calculator and that out. You need to practice the exact answer because that's what I'm going to ask you on your test most likely. If you don't practice it, you're going to have trouble with it.